folks, welcome to the Pitmonic Symposium for the 6th of January 2020. Uh, Happy New Year, uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about, um, I think something that's quite appropriate being the beginning of the year, um, and that is going to be a trading plan. Okay, so, I mean, I've had a, a trading plan penciled out in my notebook, and I wanted to bring this to the forefront of my, of my consciousness, and I want it to be something that I could look at when I sat down at my computer each day. So what I've done is I've started moving everything over to a private web page on my website that I can have open and I can walk through during my trading day or rather before I begin trading. And so a trading plan is like any other plan. It simply pencils out how you want to go about doing something in particular. And um, I think that different people have different views and different strategies of how they want to uh, make a plan for something. But for me, um, I want it to do uh, three things. Number one, I want it to help me kind of become motivated to bring my mind and my emotions into a into a place where I'm making uh, good decisions. Uh, number two, I want it to be an outline that I can follow uh, methodically uh, in order to help me move through a certain uh, area of focus in the same way each time. And number three, I want it to have uh, something in there that reminds me of what my goals are in relation to what it is that I'm doing. Okay, and so I've I put this together. Um, this is just an example. This is work in progress. I'm not quite finished yet, um, but it looks something like this. Okay, and I have some things here that are quite interesting to me. Uh, trade with discipline. This is very important to me. My name, my trading plan. And here we have a, a small piece of text. Uh, winning traders know what they are going to do before they do it. They formulate a trading plan and they stick to it. This is my plan and I stick to it always. Okay, and so I want this to be something that's that's very powerful, something that's very motivating. Okay, and and I've written here, great journeys start with great beginnings, and I think this is very true. And so it's the same as if you're going to do something big, the best way to do uh, do it well is to prepare for it. Uh, and preparation for me is is very important in relation to most things that I do. And so I want to start my day uh, running through something that inspires me. Um, this doesn't have to take long, um, but I've put this in there because this is very important for, for me. Okay, and so I put in uh, an example of a playlist here. This is a playlist called, I think it's called Be Inspired. There is another one called Video Advice. These are YouTube channels. And, uh, and here you can kind of browse down to a video. These are normally short and sweet, a couple of minutes up to about 10 minutes and you watch them with headphones and they kind of bring you into that space that you need to be in order to be making uh, better decisions. You know, you want to, you want to feel good about what you're doing. Um, you want to make sure that, that you remember why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and I think some of these videos are very good at bringing you into that space. Okay. And I have some affirmations here, um, and this may sound a little bit fluffy uh, to some people, but to me, affirmations are, are quite powerful. Um, you don't have to go uh, crazy with the affirmations, but these are just things that, that help you uh, get aligned. And I have these affirmations that I do in the, in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. And these are just pretty simple uh, affirmations. Uh, as an example, I'm grateful for my health, my family, and my life. Thank you. Every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. I welcome new opportunities with an open heart and mind. And I am not my body, and I'm not even my mind. And these are important to me um, because they relate to something that's happened to me in my life. And so these just kind of, again, help align me with uh, emotionally where a place where I want to where I want to be. Okay, so this is just preparation. And here we get to the multiple time frame analysis for the supply and demand trader. And so this is just showing me here, I mean, what I want to be paying attention to uh, as a trader. Okay, and being a, a multiple time frame supply and demand trader, I mean, I'm focusing on the macro view, the median view, and the micro view. And I keep it really simple. And I've put a couple of examples in here. Here we have, this is a, the monthly chart. Well, this is the, the weekly chart, sorry. We have this little dot here. This is the origin of this move. And when price poked through it here, it went through. And then from this candle here, price managed to move above. And so I know with a pretty high degree of confidence that when price returns back to this area, roughly we'll probably see price uh, continue moving higher. And so this is just something that's um, really nice to be able to um, visualize. Okay, And I have a few examples of that. And I have something similar on the medium. So this is my medium term. And here I have my, my shorter term, and these are uh, the entries, okay? Uh, very specific entry patterns that I'm looking for. 
which brings us down to the entries. Okay, and this is um, I've written here. I mean, how I enter trades is simple. I buy low and I sell high. Okay, and this is very obvious, I think, for many people. But sometimes you need to be reminded what it is that we're doing. Okay, because if you have a trading plan, you have a, an idea of what it is that you're you're doing, but it's only in your head. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in our heads. Okay, we're thinking about what happened yesterday, what is going to happen tomorrow or later today. And so it's just nice to have something that's really important, pull it out of your head, you put it on a piece of paper or on a computer screen so that you're looking at it all the time. This just makes it very easy to come back to. Okay, so I buy low and I sell high at market prices where price has attracted market participants in the past or better. Okay, so I'm looking at um, historical prices or better. Okay, and so my entries here, buy low and sell high. I take trades at prices no cheaper or more expensive than the beginning of the buy and the sell zone. And we've discussed this many times in the past. And this is just a way for me to visualize where I want to be engaging in the market. And again, by, by having it in front of me, then I know my rules. So I'm, I'm not going to break my rules. Buy and sell sides and zones. Okay. And so I've discussed this many times in the previous material. If you're unfamiliar with that, please go back and look at the previous uh, webinars but you have a buy side of the market, you have a sell side of the market, and with each of those sides of the market, you have buy and sell zones, okay? And so this is, again, just gonna keep me on the right side of where I wanna be. I'm not gonna be jumping into trades too early because my rules tell me that I shouldn't be doing that, okay? So if I have a trading plan in front of me, I have a, a process uh, that I wanna follow in order to do something, if I cut corners, and I'm not gonna get the best results, I'm not gonna get the results that I want. Okay, and if you're breaking rules and you're cutting corners, well then, then I'm not in alignment with how I want to be as a person. So this is going to make me feel bad. And so I'm just trying to prevent this. Okay, so this is just um, a very simple um, uh, point here in relation to my entries. And this is just short. I'm not quite finished with uh, documenting this process, but this is roughly what it's going to look like. Here I have risk management. When you take losses, the process of losing money must be slowed to ensure that you are able to preserve your capital. This is my job as a trader, to preserve my capital. And it is that. Yes, it's our job to earn money, um, but we're not always going to earn money. Sometimes we're going to lose money. And so you want to ensure that when you're losing money, you're losing money as slowly as possible. And there are different strategies for doing this. And this is one that I've been uh, using for quite some time. And this is in relation to volume. Okay, so I have, I have a position. Okay, so I have a position, a risk for each trade, which is 1% of my account. And if I take, um, if I take three losses in a row, then my risk is divided by two. And so now I'm only allowed to have uh, half a percent for each position. Okay, and these are my batches of my trades, as you can see. I take two trades for each trade. So I have my first trade has a, a target that's closer. My second trade has a target that's at opposing supply or demand. And every time I take a loss, once I go over um, three losses in a row, my position guys goes down in half. If I take another three losses, I go down to a quarter percent for my batch of trades. So this ensures that um, if there's a hole in the bucket, then I start to fill the hole in the bucket so the water leaves the bucket much slower. Okay, and so, and the same if I start to win again and I start to earn money, I'm not allowing myself to jump back into full position sizes immediately. I have to rebuild my capital up to the level it was prior to my string of losses. Okay, and this is just a really good way to enable me to uh, prevent um, me losing too much money too quickly. Because I mean, I'm, I'm quite a, a risk averse trader and I can't stand taking huge losses and many of them in a row. And so I wanna try and slow that down a lot because yes, it's gonna financially keep me in the game, but also it's gonna keep me emotionally and psychologically in the game. Because I'm feeling uh, really bad because I've lost uh, some money. I mean, this is obviously gonna affect my decision making process. And this is essentially what I'm trying to prevent. And this is all outlined uh, here. Okay, also have my, my limits, my trade limits. If I'm losing, if I've lost uh, 6%, uh, for a month and I'm no longer allowed to trade. I have to wait till the next month. And this is just kind of a cooling off period. Cool. And then I have some goals. Um, never quitting. I'm never going to quit. I'm going to continue to strive to reach my goals. 
I'm a constant state of expansion, okay? And so once we uh, reach a goal, well, then we want to look for different goals, okay? And so our goals are there to ensure that we are able to climb the mountain. So when you're climbing a mountain, you're not just going to say, I'm going to get to the top of the mountain. I mean, you're looking at different ledges on the mountain. You say, okay, I'm going to get to that ledge. And when you're on that ledge, and I'm going to get to the ledge that's further up. When I get to that ledge, and I'm going to look for a, le a ledge that's further up, okay? And so, I mean, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat an elephant one mouthful at a time. You have to break up the, the big the big goal into, into micro goals because this makes it mentally easier to do, okay? And so I have these, I have my daily goals, okay? And these are I'm consistent on a daily basis. Um, I'm earning at least 5% uh, a month. And by the 1st of January 2021, I want to be trading quarter of a million dollars in my account. I mean, these are going to change. Again, I'm not finished. These are just kind of uh, ones that I put in there, but these are going to be filled out with, with goals that are important to me as I progress on my way to my major goals. And I'll probably break this up and I'll have my shorter term, my medium term, and my long term goals. But I think it's really important that you see what your goals are uh, throughout the day. Okay, so what I like to do is I have a little notebook. My goals are in my notebook. And I'll ponder my goals before I go to bed at night when I'm doing my affirmations, just before I nod off. When you're, when you're just waking up in the morning and you're kind of moving between the dream state and the waking state, uh, the conscious mind is kind of asleep there, okay? Because that's your conscious analytical mind, your, your critical mind. And so when that is still asleep, that's a really good time to bring up your affirmations and your goals and ponder these as you're moving out of sleep into kind of a more wake state. And do the same thing as you're going to bed at night. You lay down, you close your eyes, you start to drift. And as you become uh, very drowsy and sleepy, then it's a good idea to bring up your affirmations and run these through. And your goals as well. Maybe visualize your goals uh, having come to fruition before you nod off. Okay, and this is just something that I like to do every morning and every evening. Good, so this is, I think, a really nice start. Um, my trading plan, I encourage you to, uh, to try and do something similar because I mean, having documented your process is half of the work. Okay, so you know what you're going to do, you know when you're going to do it, you know what setups are going to be looking like, you're not going to be cutting corners, you're not going to be entering too early, you're going to be waiting. Why? Because that's what the blueprint has said that you should be doing. Okay, so it's just a really good idea to make sure that this is done. And so this is what this looks like. And I have this on my screen. I'll probably print it out. So I have it on my desk um, and it doesn't change very often. And so this is something that's when I'm finished with it, then it's something that's going to remain static for quite an extended period of time. The only thing that's going to change uh, is probably my, maybe some of my affirmations, but also some of my goals as we progress through the year. Okay. So this is just a really nice practice. Okay. So knowing what we know, with our trading plan. Let's go to the charts and have a look. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Multiple time frame analysis, macro, median, micro. We have this. We have the macro, the median, and the micro. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is exactly what we specified in the trading plan. I'm looking for uh, lows to be removed. Let's have a look at this. Okay, here we have a look on the monthly chart. I want to see an important high having been removed. Okay, and you can see there's one just here. This gray dot tells me that this is a high, an important high, and this is an important high because when price left here, we moved below this high, sorry, this low. So now this one is gone. You see how price moved above it? Okay, and so you, so we can, we can see this, we can expect that price is going to wriggle higher. Why? Because we're able to move price beyond these highs. And so you want to start to look to buy um, a shorter term. Okay. And so here you can see that we have the weekly chart. You can see here that we had also another high that has been taken out. That is something that happened just in here. So here we have the macro view. Here we have the median view. Okay. So price moved above and beyond there. And here we have the daily view. And you can see here at the time price popped through, none of this existed here. Um, and so the most recent high that was removed was this one just here. We had these orange ones here, which tells us that we these are unviolated. And we have the gray ones here, which tells us that they're violated. And so this is a very clear um, picture of alignment on all three time frames. We have bulls in charge 
on the monthly, bulls in charge on the weekly, and bulls in charge on the daily. Okay, and the entry is right here at demand. Just here. I don't have that enabled. I can see I'll just move my client there, it doesn't matter. So you can see here. So this is the one most recent that was taken out. Price popped up. We went up to this weekly supply almost. We came back down to the area that moved above this one here. And this is where the entry was to buy here, okay? Um, it's just a really clear way to visualize our trading plan on a price chart, macro, median, and the micro. We can do this over and over again. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the dollar cat. And so here we have we have this low that's been taken out. You can see here. We can see it clearly here as well. We can see it clearly here as well. Okay, so you can see very clearly what's going on. So this is this one here refers to this one, and this one here refers to this one. And so these again are lining up. We have lower highs. You see the trend lines are kind of sloping down here, sloping down here. Um, and now we have this one here where price came down we had a bounce and price left from here and so what do we do well we expect something to happen in here then we do our supply and demand analysis of this area of supply in an attempt to uh, to see if it's something that we would like to trade but again the whole process following our trading plan shows that these are lined up very nicely let's have a look at the australian dollar american dollar and if you have a look here you can see that we have this this monthly area of demand down here we have not taken out any highs just yet we have this one just here it is still to be taken out which is this one here once this happens this one will be bullish this one will be bullish and then we want to look to buy at daily areas of demand in expectation that this is going to continue moving higher I had this trade on in my TransferWise account where I I converted American dollars to Australian dollars down here at the lows and I got out roughly this area of weekly supply. So I took this trade in my transfer account. I use TransferWise a lot. I hold American dollars. I'm looking at the charts here uh, very actively, of course, and then I'm moving money into different accounts, different currencies based on what I'm doing that. And I'm doing that in $1,000 blocks. Um, and on on this trade and on the Kiwi dollar trade, this one here, I did 3% on this and I did about 2% on my Australian dollar, American dollar. And this was something that was really easy to do. Okay, so you're not, you're not you, you know, I'm really not overcomplicating this at all, but I am noticing on this chart that we were very low. This is the Kiwi American dollar, we're very low. We're, you can see that we're, we're moving really deeply into this area of monthly demand. So when price was down here, I said, right, time to buy some Kiwi dollars and time to sell some American dollars. And so I made the transfer down here and I took it out when price moved to this weekly supply just here. And this gave me about a 3% return from down here from the lows up to here. So that was a beautiful trade um, and not done in my trading account, done on a transfer wise account. So it's kind of the same but different. Um, I mean, the, the order types in TransferWise aren't as comprehensive as those in uh, modern trading platforms, but this, it's the same thing, essentially. I mean, it works uh, very, very well. And again, here, we were viewing something quite similar where we were, while well, the monthly chart wasn't lined up because we were very low, the weekly chart was looking quite nice, how we moved above these, uh, these median highs. First one was here, price went above it, and this one closed above this one. And so this is confirmation that price is going to continue to wriggle higher. And, um, and the Pitmonic software is, is pretty cool because it's showing me where my areas of consumed supply and demand are located. If you look closely, a lot of these are working pretty darn well. If we have a look at this one here, this demand is tested here and it was taken out. We had this one here, it was tested here and it was taken out. Okay, we had this one here that was tested here. This one here that was cut away by this area here. We have this one here, which left. This one consumed this one. So this is the one we trade and so on and so forth. This one was taken out. This one was taken out. But you can see that the majority of these are working out very, very nicely. We had a monthly and a weekly area here. Tested, lovely reaction. 
we have a weekly tested lovely reaction we have this one down here this is a child this is a older sibling and here's the parent we went to the older sibling and this is where we bounced okay so this is just a really nice way for me to see um, which errors have been removed and which errors are responsible for removing them okay so just a, a really nice visual representation of that okay, well I'm gonna leave it at that keep this under half an hour but again I hope I hope you'll um, take the opportunity to um, kind of pencil out your your ideas and your process of, of, of how you wish to trade and keep this visible uh, throughout your trading day um, this is how I'm doing it and I'm gonna be much more disciplined this year um, and moving forward. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.